Hello everyone. Today we are going to start reading one of my favorite nonfiction books. It is Into the Wild by John Krakauer. So John Krakauer's Into the Wild was published in 1996 and it is a classic of nonfiction narrative. It's a story that has vivid character descriptions and the plot of a novel, but it's actually based on real people and real events. So the book is based on a 1993 magazine article that Krakauer wrote where he retraced the steps of Christopher McCandless, a young man found dead in a bus in Alaska in 1992 after he spent several years traveling across the United States. So this quote that you see right now in this slide actually came from Chris McCandless as he decided to go out on this journey. So he said, I've decided that I'm going to live this life for some time to come. The freedom and simple beauty is just too good to pass up. So in this book's use of novel style description and characterization to tell a true story, it is often compared to other nonfiction narratives such as Truman Capote's In Cold Blood and Tom Wolfe's The Right Stuff. But in its dealing with themes of man's relationship to human society and nature, it is often compared to other nature works such as Henry David Thoreau's Walden. So it's important to note the differences between nonfiction writing, such as Into the Wild, and actual novels. A novel is a fictional narrative in which literary elements such as exposition, rising action, climax, denouement, resolution, and characterization are essential elements. Into the Wild is an account of true events and does not contain the same literary elements as that plot arc. However, the reader should be aware that there are fictive elements to many nonfiction works because the author has to recreate scenes and he has to decide how he wants to frame the data. So I want you to look at these essential questions and think about them as we read through this novel. Your answers to these questions might even change depending on how much this book impacts you. So in life, what is most important? Friends, family, or oneself? Are families, friends, or community essential to our happiness in any way? Can a person be completely content in solitude or without the acceptance of society? Which of these is most central to our happiness? And what does it mean to be successful? So we'll be examining these questions as we make our way through this novel. So this is a quote by Wallace Stegner, and it states, It should not be denied that being footloose has always exhilarated us. It is associated in our minds with escape from history and oppression, and law and irksome obligations with absolute freedom and the road has always led west. This quote was actually scrawled into one of Chris McCandless's journals and it speaks to his absolute need for freedom, a need that is central to understanding this character. Chris felt that modern civilization shackled the human spirit and so this book is an account of his rebuke of modern society. So let's talk a little bit about John Krakauer because he's very connected to Chris McCandless. So John Krakauer was born on April 12, 1954 in Massachusetts. Two years later, his family relocated to Oregon where he developed an early passion for mountain climbing after his father took him at age eight to scale the South Sister Mountain. For the next few decades, Krakauer would focus his life around this extreme sport, first as a mountain climber, then as a writer. So his father actually wanted him to attend Harvard and become a doctor, just like Christopher McCandless's father is going to want. But Krakauer chose to attend Hampshire College, where he graduated in 1976 with a degree in environmental science. He then wandered across the country making a living as a carpenter, then as a salmon fisher in Alaska. Wherever the road took him, his main passion continued to be mountain climbing. So a newspaper article on Chris McCandless's death in the Alaska bush intrigued Krakauer, who then wrote an article on the young man's death for Outside Magazine in 1993. He later expanded on that article to create the book Into the Wild, published in 1996, which we're about to read right now. This book has garnered so much critical praise, and it was a national bestseller for over two years. The book continues to generate controversy about how McCandless lived and died. For example, disagreements continue about McCandless's exact cause of death. Some people speculate that he died from starvation. Other people think that he was poisoned or that there was a neurotoxin found in the grass pea plant that produces a deadly condition known as Lathyrism. Krakauer actually supports the latter idea, the pea theory Lathyrism idea. And in a 2015 article in The New Yorker, he almost confirmed it or all but confirmed it. 
But readers are also continuing to this day to probe how biased Krakauer may have been in his portrayal of this young man. Some people say that this book is too biased to be a true account of what happened. The same year Into the Wild was published, Krakauer joined an expedition to climb Mount Everest. After it ended in the tragic deaths of four of his climbing companions, Krakauer wrote an article about the disastrous event for Outside. This also won the National Magazine Award for reporting, and it became the basis for Krakauer's book Into Thin Air, which you might have already read. So like Into the Wild, Into Thin Air also raised questions about the interrelationship of ambition and adventure and mortality, and it became a huge bestseller. It was a finalist for both the National Book Award and the Pulitzer Prize, and it was Time Magazine's Book of the Year. So Krakauer is a very celebrated nature writer. So I'm going to upload this slideshow to your Google Classroom so that you can click on this link and watch this interview. Um, but Krakauer saw a lot of connections between McCandless and himself, and that's really why he wrote this book. He even states, I identify with him a lot, and it's a sad story. I went back to the bus for the third time last September. I've become quite good friends with his family. We have this sort of weird bond. So McCandless and Krakauer are very much connected. The author and the subject are very much connected in this book. So this is a picture of Chris McCandless a month before he died. And you can see how skinny he was. This was a self-portrait he took in Alaska, right outside the bus that he was staying in. So a little bit about Chris and a little bit about this book. Christopher McCandless was a young man from Virginia who graduated from Emory University in 1990. In the summer after his graduation, he set alone, out alone in his car to explore the western United States. So after a flood disabled his car, he continued his wandering on foot. In April of 1992, 1992 McCandless hitchhiked to Fairbanks, Alaska to hike the Stampede Trail, despite having minimal hiking equipment and supplies. He took up living in an abandoned bus near the trail and attempted to live off the land. On September 6, 1992, a hunter came across the body of McCandless, who had apparently died from starvation sometime in August. Soon after McCandless's body was found, Krakauer, a writer for Outside Magazine, and an experienced hiker and adventurer himself, began investigating McCandless's story and retracing his journey. So that is what this book is all about. It is about Krakauer retracing McCandless's steps and figuring out what happened to him, how he died, and what motivated him to set off into the wild. So this book is going to heavily focus on a concept called transcendentalism. Transcendentalism um, refers to new ideas in literature, religion, culture, and philosophy that emerged in New England in the early to middle 19th century. It is sometimes called American transcendentalism to distinguish itself from uses or other uses of the word. So transcendentalism began, began as a protest against the general state of culture and society, and in particular, the state of intellectualism and dogma at Harvard and the doctrine of the Unitarian Church. Among transcendentalists, that's a tough word, among transcendentalists' core belief was an ideal spiritual state that transcends the physical and empirical and is only realized through individual intuition rather than through doctrines of established religion. So Chris adored transcendentalist writers such as Thoreau and Emerson and Whitman, and he embodied their philosophies throughout his short life. He embodied the idea that the only way to truly connect to the spiritual world is through nature. To appreciate the natural world is to connect to God. To appreciate the natural world is to connect to one's highest self. A couple more questions that I want you to keep in mind as we begin to further our understanding of both Chris McCandless and the Transcendentalist movement. Um, heroes often embody the qualities of a culture. So as we study Chris McCandless, I want you to examine McCandless as a possible hero. Many people feel like he is. What evidence is there that McCandless is a hero to Americans? What qualities does he have that represent our own culture and what we value? And in what ways do the ideas of the transcendentalists still resonate in modern America? Why are we still talking about transcendentalists 150 years later? So these slides just contain some extra information about the book. Again, I'll post this to Google Classroom so that you'll be able to access the links via um, the actual, actual slideshow. You can do a little bit of extra work if you're curious about this book. Um, so if you click on any of these links 
Um, so you can click on any of these links if you want to access some of the information in these last few slides. Again, this is if you just want to do some extra research into Chris McCandless. All right, everyone. So this is our intro to Into the Wild. I hope you love this book as much as I do. Have a lovely day, and I will see you next class. And again, all of these links are available in your Google Classroom. Bye, guys.